transporters may sometimes be called upon to perform an operation as soon as a patient arrives. Emergency facilities provided for life-saving treatment include an operating theater and an x-ray room to deal with those whose condition has deteriorated in transit or who've been flown back from an area where only first aid facilities exist. When the surgeon has made his examination, he may decide that further traveling is undesirable for the time being and order the patient to be detained. The case with the secondary hemorrhage will be taken later to the operating theater where the dressing will be taken down and the wound treated surgically. But normally, all stretcher cases not in need of immediate treatment are assembled in the wards of the Casualty Air Evacuation Unit adjoining the sick quarters for classification before disposal. The medical officer, who is usually a surgeon, follows down the line in company with a sister and makes his examination of each case. He's already informed as to which hospitals are available and their capacity for receiving new cases. Details of disposal or instructions for any special treatment are chalked on the blackboard. In stations where the blackboard system is not used, the same information is entered in a special log which is kept in the ward and referred to by the nursing orderlies as a guide for their treatment of patients. The second part of the casualty air evacuation label is now collected by the orderly who also records the surgeon's instructions for the disposal of the patients. The third part of the label travels with them to the hospital. As the wards fill up, they take on an air of great activity. All orderlies are fully occupied in attending to the patient's needs. Some want a drink, others a wash or shave. The patient who threatened to be troublesome on the second aircraft is apparently quiet. The straps are left on him for the remainder of his journey, but for the time being can be loosened. There are always those who require special care, particularly our case with the spinal injury. The orderlies ease his position slightly to prevent pressure sores developing and apply massage to his back. The walking wounded are sent to a separate ward after having been checked in. They are free to read or write, play games and generally relax until the time comes for their dispersal. Perhaps their greatest treat at this stage is the hot meal that's always ready for them. Some of these casualties who've been flown straight from the battlefield may not have had a hot meal for many days. So cheerfulness and a consideration for their condition is just as essential here as anywhere else. Many of the stretcher cases have not lost their appetite nor their eternal optimism and much can be done to make their troubles seem less important while waiting for the next stage of their journey. Occasionally there's one who is due for an operation on arrival at his destination and is therefore not permitted solid food. This too will be noted on the blackboard which must be consulted before the patients are fed. While all this is going on, you should return your equipment to the storeroom and replace any articles used on the trip. This is essential. You cannot know when you'll be called out for the next trip, so always be fully equipped and ready ready for any type of case that may come aboard. Your skill and efficiency are essential to the well-being of your patients. Remember then to check your equipment before starting your trip. Take a full supply of hot drinks, sweets and cigarettes They'll always be welcome. Show a confident manner to reassure the nervous passenger. 
handle your oxygen equipment with care and always check the flow meter. Move your spinal case from time to time. Use morphia to prevent extreme pain unless you know there are contraindications. Take firm action when necessary with a delirious patient. Keep an eye on infusions and finally a constant lookout for any sudden deterioration in the patient's condition. Your job as an air orderly demands courage and devotion and a constant determination to do everything possible for those who are coming in today, tomorrow, week in, week out. The most you can do for them can never be enough.